Welcome to the Vallejo or Vallejo home in Sonoma. I am your tour guide, Emily. Travel back with me to the latter half of the 1850s, where we will learn what it was like for the Vallejos to live on this property. Right now we're traveling down the Alameda. Imagine what it was like to be part of the Vallejo family, traveling down in a carriage along this long road that leads up to their house. Let us begin the tour at the chalet. I am standing in front of the building known as the chalet. Now, the chalet was actually a storage shed during the harvest time. The Vallejo family grew a lot of different types of fruits and vegetables, and this is where they could keep those throughout the year. The upstairs could be used as extra sleeping quarters when needed. Today in the chalet, one can see exhibits on General Vallejo, his family, and their accomplishments here in Sonoma. There is also the 1850s French Phaeton carriage that the general rode in. Now let's visit the kitchen. Now, what is something different about families that lived in the later half of the 1800s that might be different from how families live today? Well, one way is right behind me, the kitchens. Now, kitchens were actually always part of the interior of a house. In the case of the Vallejo family, their kitchen was actually a separate building. This was done for a few reasons. Now, during the 1800s, when you went to cook food, you didn't cook on a gas or electric stove. Those weren't available back then. You cooked on a wood burning stove. That meant that there was fire inside a building and a fire inside a wooden building, should it get out of hand, could cause that building to burn down. The idea is that you would protect the house and only one structure would burn if a fire did break out while cooking. As we enter the kitchen, one of the first things you'll notice is the herb garden. The first room we visit is the actual cooking area. Here, you can see the apple press. Food that's ready to be cooked. There's a coffee grinder in the back. And there is that wood burning stove. You will even see an apple peeler core, essential if you like apple pies. As we leave the cooking area, we will enter the main room of the kitchen structure. You might think it's unusual to have a dining room in a kitchen, but it really isn't much different from the dining spaces you have off your kitchens today. Here, the servants of the Vallejo family would eat their meals. And when they weren't eating, they could clear off the space and prep meals for the family. The ladder in this room was used by the servants to get to their sleeping quarters upstairs. As we leave the dining area of the kitchen, we walk into the cook's bedroom. Now you may find it unusual that the Vallejo family had people to cook for them, clean their house, and do laundry, but that was not uncommon during the time period they lived in. We are in the bedroom of the last cook of the Vallejo family. Now, when the Vallejos moved to this property, a lot of their servants were those of California Indian descent. But as time went on and more and more people came to Sonoma, they hired different people. People from Germany and Italy came to work here at the Vallejo property. As time went on, we start to see the Chinese also come into Sonoma. You may have noticed this unusual pillow on the bed. It's a wooden headrest. The Chinese believe that this type of headrest was good for circulation. Although this one is wood, many different materials were used and porcelain was most popular. We now move to the west side of the property. That little building is known as the Delirio. There is the swan fountain. You see the back side of the kitchen 
and the house. This area would have had orange and olive trees when the Vallejos lived here. That little building, the Delirio, well, that was General Vallejo's personal retreat where he could read and write. He wrote volumes on California history. It is time to walk up to one of the most important features of the property, the reservoir. General Vallejo knew of the artesian spring and its abundance of water. Having such a water source would be important. General Vallejo translated the name the California Indians gave to the hillside into Latin and called the property La Crima Montes, or Tear of the Mountain. The Vallejos decided it was time to move from their house, the Casa Grande, at the northern end of the Sonoma Plaza to a quieter place as the town grew. Listen and look around at the reservoir. You can see why this was a choice property. Did you hear that bullfrog? Oh, look at that great blue heron take flight. Up the hill, you will see this cabin. It's called the Hermitage. This was an outbuilding for the Vallejo boys to use when hunting and fishing, keep their animals at, and sleep in when they came home from school. Looking across the vast acreage of the Vallejo property today, you no longer see the orchards of pears, peaches, apples, or lemons, the barn, or the bathhouse. This is the pan or devil's head fountain, the second fountain on the property. It was gravity fed from the reservoir up the hill. In 1873, General Vallejo started the Sonoma Water Company. The crystalline water would be the means of increasing his income. The spring produced 6,000 gallons an hour, enough to supply not only his ranch, but also the citizens of Sonoma who did not have wells. The Crema Montes made General Vallejo very happy, and he wrote about it. To have a good home, good furniture, good carpeting, good bedrooms, and fireplaces for fire and cold weather, water in abundance for everything, and in addition, good and excellent baths. To have a hundred acres of irrigable land, planted with fruit trees, grapevines, and garden stuff, both to sell and for the use of family. This is what made General Vallejo happy. The time has come to now visit the house. Welcome to the 1850s home of the Vallejo family. Now, General Vallejo actually purchased this home from Boston, Massachusetts. It's what we refer to as a kit house. So it was put in parts on a boat, shipped around the Horn of South America, and then brought up here to Sonoma. It was assembled here and the family resided the rest of the years in this house. You've arrived in Sonoma at the Vallejo home and you want to let them know that you're here. Do you knock on a door? Do you ring a doorbell? Well, in a way you do. You go ahead and turn this. This was a doorbell of its day. We can now enter into the house. To the immediate left is a sala, a living room. You can see the Vallejos enjoyed music. This was one of the first three pianos to arrive in California. They had their portraits painted and looked at pictures through a stereoscope. Luisa Vallejo received seashells as a gift from her husband before they were wed. This is the dining room of the Vallejo family. Not only would they have had many family dinners here, but they also often entertained and had guests to dinner as well. Food would have been brought from the kitchen through the back of the house and served in the dining room. 
Henry Vallejo, one of the general's grandsons, remembers. At dinner, the general sat at the end of the long walnut table with his back to the west window. When the large bowl of frijoles topped with cheese was brought into the dining room, it was placed in front of Grandpa Vallejo, who said in English to the hungry, eager grandchildren, Who loves Grandpa the best? The child, answering first, received the first serving of beans, the melted cheese streaming from the spoon to the bowl. Here in General Vallejo's study, he would have rested or hosted guests. He might have read, played chess, or even written letters and more on his books of the history of California. While Senora Vallejo was furnishing the house, it is said that she had picked a game table to hold the general's chess set and it had cost her $70. As you can see, there are two staircases in the Vallejo home. Now, each one had a different purpose. The one on my left, this side, was the family staircase. You can see it's different. It's carpeted. The family would have used this and their guests to get up and down to the bedrooms. The one on the right is the servant's staircase. Now, this one's a little bit different. It's a little bit steeper and the hand railings are different but they would have had the servants use that to bring items up and down to the bedrooms. There's another difference between the two, and that is they can be closed off with a door. Now imagine that General Vallejo and his wife had friends over for dinner, and in the evening they're sitting around for entertainment, but it's time for the children to go to bed. They could close this door off and the servants and nannies could use that stairway to go up and down to check on the children without disturbing the Vallejos and their guests. If you visit the Vallejo home, one thing you will notice is that the handrails seem a little low. Well, there's really a good reason for this. A lot of people assume it has to do with the fact that people were shorter during the 1800s. That's not true. General Vallejo is over six feet tall. Some people think it has to do with the fact that they had so many children. Maybe it was safer for the children. That's not so either. At this time, there were no building codes, and it was not uncommon to find a Victorian staircase about 24 inches high. Upstairs, you will find the bedroom of General Vallejo and his wife, Senora Vallejo, as well as two bedrooms set up for the only two daughters born in the house, Maria and Luisa. Eliza Donner tells what she saw in the nursery when she visited the house. My eyes wandered about until they became riveted on one corner of the room, where stood a child's crib, which looked like gold. Its head and footboards were embellished with figures of angels and a canopy of lace, like a fleecy cloud hovered over. One room you haven't seen in the house is a bathroom. The Vallejos never had indoor plumbing. Should the need for a potty arise in the middle of the night, this Victorian era commode would have been used. I do hope you enjoyed my tour of the Vallejo family home. And if you're ever in Sonoma, come visit us.